Skin the Heart Away, Southern T. Back with another EP. And today, I'm here with the longest short video I'm going to have. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm probably going to be here a little second making this video because I want to hit all the points and I want to get all my points across. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that, <clears throat> that I say this, you know, the right way. Now, it's been a long conversation going on for years. Years and years. Who's better? As long as MMA has been born. You know, boxing been around for a minute. But as long as MMA has been born, it's been a conversation. Who's really better? The boxer or the MMA guy? You know what I mean? Who's better? The boxer or the MMA guy? Who will win in the fight? Uh, Mike Tyson or, you know, uh, Randy Couture? Or who will win in the fight? Uh, Chuck Liddell or Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, and uh, there have been, you know, uh, plenty of attempts, you know, what I mean, there have been plenty of attempts at you know, mixing the two MMA boxing, you know what I mean? Not mean to have been, you know, highly successful, but uh, in 2021. We got uh, the great Shannon Briggs, you know, former heavyweight champion Shannon Briggs. You know, let's go champ, Shannon Briggs. And we got a guy, Kyle Rampage Jackson. You might know him too, you know, former MMA heavyweight champion, Rampage Jackson. You know, former pride fighting champion, Rampage Jackson. You might know these guys. I know... My boxing pills, I'm going to bring my camera up in a second. I told you I'm going to be here a little second. This ain't an official live stream, but, you know, it's going to, you know, it's kind of a live stream. So y'all might so y'all might know Shannon Briggs and Rampage Jackson. You know, uh, Shannon Briggs is one that's been in and around boxing a lot. You know, Shannon Briggs is a big, brash personality. You know what I mean? Shannon Briggs and uh, Rampage Jackson are both, you know, legends in their own sport. Both are former champions. In their own sport, both are very good at what they do in their heyday. Shannon Briggs has fought some of the, you know, the best of the best, the Clitch Coles of the world, like that. Rampage Jackson has fought some of the best of the, of the best, you know, like the uh, Vandalay Silvers of the world, the Chuck Liddell's of the world. You know what I mean? So these two have, um, and these two have a very interesting relationship. They got like a, a friendship beef thing kind of going. Like they most definitely are going to fight each other, but you know they they uh they get along, you know, to a certain degree. They got it's that fine line with them where where you don't know whether they're joking around when they get together or they're dead serious about to fight each other, you know, when they get together type deal. And I think it's good. I think it sells because we really don't know the dynamics of their relationship. You know what I mean? So uh Shannon Briggs and um uh, Rampage Jackson have been going back and forth now. They've been going back and forth for about, you know, eight months at this point. You know, in the beginning, not too long ago, I thought it was, you know, uh, kind of a joke. I thought it had went by the wayside because I stopped hearing about it. I, when it first dropped, I heard that Shannon Briggs and Rampage Jackson will be competing in the boxing match first, and then they'll be competing in the MMA match. You know what I mean? Uh, that was about, you know, eight months ago. Then, you know, about a uh, month went by since then. You know, they did some press conferences. They did press conferences about two months straight. You know what I mean? You know, I was excited about it. And then it kind of died down, you know, around the fifth month. It died down for about two months. But lo and behold, you know, last month, it came back with a bang. And then we came back with this event. Now, when it, when the event first dropped, I'm thinking, oh, shit, Shannon Briggs and uh, uh, Rampage Jackson about to fight. But... What they're doing is, you know, they have a beef. They got a you know, beef. The beef is who's tougher, MMA or boxing. And I think it's highly interesting. I think it's something that, you know, we should get behind as boxing fans type deal. I think it's something, you know, that we should get, be, get behind as MMA guys if you like MMA. You know, this Southern T boxing and sports. You know what I mean? So we got these guys coming together. And at first they were going to fight MMA and boxing. But they got uh, Triller. Y'all know Triller. They got Triller to invest. You know, they got uh, other people to invest. They got Triller, and they got a bunch of other investors, right? And Shannon Briggs and 
and uh, Queen Rampage Jackson have actually gotten these people to start and fund their own league. Queen Rampage Jackson and Shannon Briggs are promoters of this league. They're the face of this league. You know, they uh, pretty much are hands-on uh, with this league. Uh, I know the uh, only thing I think they uh, – didn't do pretty much is pay for this event. You know, they had a hand in everything. They, they partners work directly with them to set this up and all that good stuff. The thing about, uh, and this is called triad comeback sports. The thing about comeback triad sport, sports is these are the rules, right? The ring is not a square. It's not an octagon, but it's a triangle. It's a triangle. When you look at it, you know, it's kind of crazy. It'll kind of blow your mind. It's a triangle. And the rules of this are as such. Uh, it's boxing, right? It's boxing rules, but you're allowed to clinch. So if you're an MMA guy, you know, you could put your hand behind his head, throw those punches. You could grab them. You could clinch them. You could stop them from punching you and everything. You know, if you're a boxing guy, it's pretty much boxing, but they allow you to grab them. They allow you to clinch. You can't throw elbows. You know, you can't take them down, but you can grab them. And um, that, what the uh, whole setup, what the whole setup about this is, is, it's boxing versus MMA. It's trying to make it as even as possible for for us to decipher who's better between the boxer and who's better between the MMA fighter. You know what I mean? In the real fight. And the trick to it is they don't use boxing gloves. They use MMA gloves. So, you know, it's, it's too many rounds in a triangle ring with MMA gloves with boxing knockdown rules. You know what I mean? They uh, had an event. They just did about... You know, uh, two weeks ago, they had an event. They just did it about two weeks ago. Triller put on the event, a triad sports event. They did about two weeks ago. Um, the score for this, the score for this event was fourteen eleven, and MMA saw themselves victorious in this fight. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to, you know, break down each fight. I'm going to give you a little background on each fighter, boxing, the boxing versus the boxer versus the MMA, because I think there's, you know. Highly intriguing type deal. I think this, I think eventually, like this is going to be big. Just when they start getting the right names to get in it and stuff like that, I think it's going to be, you know, uh, a big thing. They got uh, older uh, boxers and MMA guys. They got younger boxers and M MMA guys. They had a mix of, you know, a lot. But it's headlined it by uh, Quinn Rampage Jackson and uh, Shannon Briggs. Now, the main event, now the main event for this uh, event. Now, the main event for this event was, you know, two people you might know. You had Kurad Pulau versus Frank Mir. Now, that's going to be the last fight I talk about. I'm going to hit, you know, I'm going to hit on, uh, you know, the prelim fights first, the early fights. In, in the uh, very first fight, we had uh, a guy named Harry Gelada. Harry, Harry Gelada is the boxer. He has a record of 8-3 and three with uh, three KOs. He's, he stands 5'10". And he fights at the 135 pound division, and he's 26 years old. He fought a guy called Jacob Trial. Jacob Trial is team MMA. He's six and five as an MMA fighter. He's two zero oh, and one as a boxer, and he's one and zero oh, as a kickboxer. He fights at the 147 pound division in boxing. He's five six, 130 pounds. In this fight, uh, Henry Gelada, he won by split decision. You know that was a pretty close fight, pretty even fight. You know, uh, as again, this Jacob Thrive guy had boxing experience. So boxing started the night off with an L. Boxing took the first L, one to zero. In the second fight, and this is a fight that I was completely disgusted by. I think here's the problem. This was a, a women's fight, a fight in the women's division. You had a fight between uh, Alexis Cope and Angelita Hauskashen. Angelita Hauskashen I'm guessing she's Russian. Her name is Angelina Hopskashenider and Alexa Cook. Uh, team boxing, Angelina Hopskashenider is 0-4, y'all. She's 0-4, and, and she's 39 years old. This girl is 0-4 and, and 39 years old. She's 5'1", 118 pounds. She faced off against Alexis Cook of Team MMA, who's 2-1, and one, one knockout, one submission, 5'3", and 116 pounds. And when I tell y'all this MMA woman destroyed this women's boxer, like this fight wasn't even close. This fight lasted 40 seconds. Uh, I never want to see that kind of thing going on again. That's the only problem that I had with this card. 
that's the only problem I had with this whole triad event was that women's fight. They uh they uh that lady uh, MMA was a complete mismatch for that women's boxer. That women's boxer was 29 years old. This Alexis Cook person was every bit of like 22. She was no older than 22, 23 years old. This it was a complete mismatch, and I think that was hard. But the first fight was close. Split decision win for Harry Gelada. Team Boxing won the first match. Harry Gelada won the first match for Team Boxing. Team MMA won the second match with Alexis Cook. Alexis Cook got to stop his victory in 40 seconds in a brutal knockout. It was really hard to win. That was the only problem I had. That was the only problem I had with the uh, with the events that went on at this. Um, that was the only problem I had with the Triad Combat Sports event. Outside of that, I think this is going to be a great thing. I think the people should get on it. Because it's really a boxing versus MMA thing. I, as they get bigger, they get bigger name boxers. They get bigger name MMA guys. I think this event going to start to grow. Now, let's go on to the third fight. Right now, you know, it's 1-1. One, one. Boxing got one win. MMA got one win. In the third fight, we had Albert Tamidel of Team MMA. He's 22-4 and four against Team's Boxing, Scott Sigmund who has a record of 36 and 15 and 18 KOs as a boxer. The MMA guy, Tuminev, is 24 years old. The boxer, Scott Sigmund, is 34 years old. The MMA guy is 5'11", 170 pounds. The boxer guy is 5'9", 175 pounds. Interesting tidbit. This boxing guy faced off against Roy Jones Jr. He faced off against Ronald Gravel. He faced off against Jaleon Love. He faced off against Caleb Truex. He faced off against Matt Carball. And he faced off against Lewis Arias. Lewis Arias is the guy that just beat Jerry Heard in that upset victory. So this guy, Sigmund, got fought Roy Jones Jr., Lewis Arias, Matt Carball, Ronald Gravel, Jaleon Love, and Caleb Truex. And he was going up against the MMA guy, Albert Tuminev. Now, Albert Tuminev is an MMA prospect, still a young guy. Kind of surprised he was in his event because he's still an active guy. He's on the five-fight winning streak. His last fight was in the UFC. Why the hell is he fighting on this car? Uh, but he's a part of uh, America Top Team. If you don't know MMA, that's one of the best uh, MMA, UFC, mixed martial arts, you know, uh, gyms you could be out of, one of the best gyms you could go to and work with. You know what I mean? More so a wrestling gym over a punching gym. You know what I mean? Uh, but he is a striker. This guy is a striker. He has 14 knockouts and eight decisions. He's on the five-fight win streak. And he uh, has losses to Leon Edwards. You know, for your MMA people, if you know Leon Edwards, he has a loss to Leon Edwards and Gunnar Nelson. You know what I mean? So in this fight versus Tuminev and Sigmund, Tuminev is the boxer. I mean, Tuminev is the MMA guy. Sigmund is the boxer. Tuminev completely dominated this fight. It was easy. The MMA guy looked like the boxer. He completely sat back and he picked this boxer apart. Again, this boxer has uh, 15 losses and 36 wins. Albert Tuminev, MMA guy, picked the box apart. One even close, you know what I mean? He dropped the guy. Um, he he dropped the guy once. He dropped the guy once in this fight. You know what I mean? So they put MMA up, you know, two to one on the, on this fight card. And now it's finna get good, y'all. Now it's finna get good. Now it's finna get good. We have uh from team, we have from team boxing, Brian Vera. He's 28 and 17. This guy, on his boxing resume, he's fought William Monroe, Matt Corbov also. He's fought Andy Lee. He's fought uh, Rocky Fielding. And he's fought uh, Julio Cesar Chavez twice. He's 39 years old, 5'11", fights at the 168 pound division with 18 knockouts. He fought from Team MMA, Derek Campos. Derek Campos is 20 and 11. He also has some boxing experience. He's 33 years old, 5'9", 145 pounds. For reference, if you know, if you know, if you don't know, Derek Compost, he fought uh AJ McKee, Rich Clemente, and Michael Chandler. This is this was probably, you know, one of the fights of the night. This fight and the fight I'm going to talk about next. Brian Vera is a, a former boxer. He fought Derek Compost. Derek Compost got dropped once in this fight. The team MMA fighter got dropped once in this fight. And the team boxer fighter got dropped twice in this fight. Early on in this fight, team MMA, Derek Campos, he was giving it to Brian Vera to box. You know what I mean? Really giving it to him, put him on him. He dropped him twice. But later on in the rounds, again, I get in the uh, these they fight seven rounds. So about for like the first two or three rounds, for about the first two. 
What's up? What's up? I'm a, uh, I'm gonna call you back when I finish my uh, my show, my show real quick. What you doing? Uh, what you doing? Uh, I yeah, I, I'm gonna call you back at the fancy show. Uh, All right. But yeah, uh, uh, Brian, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Brian Compost. Yeah, he was getting off on Brian Vera, you know what I mean? But uh, Brian Vera started to make his charts late, about round three, round four, and he ended up dropping no compost. High, high action fight, high intense fight. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm not doing this card justice. I'm not doing this fight thing justice. I'm not, I'm not doing this justice by telling y'all this is one of them events that you really had to see to really get the feel for. It's like something we've never seen before, truthfully, because we have never seen it before. It's like a hybrid of MMA. In boxing, this fight between Brian Vera and Derek Compost. If you can find it, go Google it on the internet. Look for it. High action. Both guys got dropped. Uh, the uh, uh, team uh, MMA won this fight also by majority decision. I'm telling y'all, this fight was extremely, extremely close. Team MMA won this fight uh, also. So you got uh, team boxing. You got Harry Gelada of team boxing with the first win. You got Alexa Cup of team MMA with the second win. You got Albert Tumine of Team MMA with the third win. And you got Derek Campos of Team MMA with the fourth win. So right now it's three to one, Team MMA over boxing on this card. You know what I mean? And now we get into the main event, the main card. Now we get into the big fights, the main card of the boxing event. The, the next three fights are the highlighted fights, you know, of this card type deal. And uh, we got guys that you might know, you know what I mean, for Team Boxing. We got Michael Seals. For team boxing, for team boxing, we got uh Michael Seals, and for team MMA, we got Matt Mitchell. Matt Mitchell used to play in the NFL as well. He's a former NFL player. He used to play for the Minnesota Vikings, if I'm not mistaken. Matt Mitchell did. Yeah, Matt Mitchell used to play for the Minnesota Vikings, if I'm not mistaken. He's representing Team MMA in this uh, triad comeback sporting event where it's boxing versus MMA. Matt, uh, ah, my bad. Mike Perry. Mike Perry and Michael Seals. My bad, my bad. Mike Perry is an MMA guy. Mike Perry is a controversial. Mike Mike Perry is a controversial MMA guy. You know, Mike Perry once got to fight in the bar and he yelled out, you know, uh, the N-word, you know, one time. But honestly, I know it's going to sound crazy. White guy, yeah, that's the N-word. Skin the hard away. Sudden T, and you finna protect him. But be real with you, most of Mike Perry, <laughs> most of Mike, and he don't give him a pass at all. Because he he apologized for it. He thoroughly apologized for it. Mike Perry literally went to all his friends, and he apologized to them personally. Mike Perry went on the whole little guilt trip tour where he went around just doing shit, apologizing to people for this type deal. But he got to a fight with some random guys in the bar, he caught one of them a nigga and he knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Michael Perry is a guy who's a big name in the MMA. He he's had an up and down career. You know what I mean? In MMA, he's not the best MMA guy, but he's most definitely not the worst MMA, MMA guy. Tough dude. I do like Mike Perry. I don't believe Mike Perry is a racist. Nothing like that. Mike Perry has done a lot of dumb shit. And he's like, this is one of Tyrone Woodley's best friends for reference. This is Tyrone Woodley's best friend for reference. Though his best friend is a black guy. Been his best friend forever and ever and ever. I don't know, so he's not, you know, he, he has done and said some dumb shit, but I don't think this is a bad dude. I think at heart this is a good dude. We got Mike Perry versus uh Team Boxing, Michael Seals. Michael Seals is a guy who's still competing in boxing right now, even though he's 39 years old. He just had a boxing fight in 2020. You know what I mean? He just had a boxing fight in 2020 where he won with a TKO victory. Michael Seals versus Mike Perry was the fight of the night. It was one of the highlight fights. You might know Michael Seals. You might know Michael Perry. Michael Seals just had a fight on PBC Fox. You know what I mean? Boxing versus uh MMA. Uh, this probably was the biggest fight, you know, of the night. Michael Perry is 14 and 8 with 11 KOs and three decisions. Michael Perry is a striker in MMA. He's a guy that uses his hands. He calls himself the best striker in boxing. You know what I mean? Him and Max Dalloway. That's what they be saying. I'm the best uh striker. I'm the best striker in boxing, you know what I mean? He stands 5'10", 170 pounds. He has a win over Mickey Gal. And uh, he has a win over uh, Mickey Gal. He's always in highlight, you know, uh, highlight fights, knockout fights. He's either going to knock you out. I mean, he got 14 wins. 
He got 14 wins and 11 KOs and three decisions. You know what I mean? Uh, he's one. He's a high volume puncher, strong guy. Uh, high activity fighter. He he. Uh, in this combat trailer, uh, in this combat, in this triad combat sports event that Triller hosted, he fought uh Michael Seals. Michael Seals is a boxer. He represents Team Boxing. He's 25 and three, uh, with 19 KOs. He's also a guy who goes in there. He's trying to knock you out. Michael Seals just got a TKO victory on Fox PBC, uh, early on this year. In August, matter of fact, in August, he KO'd a guy named uh, Jose Abreu. He KO Jose Abreu in August. He's staying 6'3", 175 pounds. He's staying 6'3", 175 pounds. And he's a former. I'm going to give every fighter credit for their accomplishments on this thing. So far, we haven't, haven't had any fighter, boxer, or MMA guy who's had a championship belt of any sorts. But we finally got, but we finally got one. But we finally got one. Michael Seals. He's a former WBC. U.S. Cruiserweight Champion. That's the WBC United States Cruiserweight Champion. You know what I mean? So shout out Michael Seals on his accomplishments. So he's he is a former champion competing in this triad, you know, boxing event. Michael Seals, I told you, just had a knockout in August, and he fought combat uh, sports two weeks ago. So this fight is between Mike Perry and uh, Michael Seals. This was a, a bomb burn. I'm telling you, uh, it started off, you know, and this was a highly controversial fight. Team MMA, they won this fight. You know, Mike Perry is a popular guy. Team MMA won this fight, but this was one. Of, this was the most controversial fight, you know, on the card. Even some MMA UFC guys felt like that, you know, Michael Perry, uh, you know, got a gift decision in this. Uh, Michael Seals came out early, and, you know, he took his time. He was patient. He was patient on Michael Perry. He was piecing them up, finding them with the jab. He really was landing everything he was punching. But, you know, Mike Perry is a tough guy. Mike Perry was getting heels off, too. Kept going forward. Mike Perry utilized the clinch in this sporting event very well. When Michael Seals got, uh, you know, was getting out too much, uh, Michael Perry would wrap him up, push him all the way to the corner, you know, and start doing his dirty boxing tactics, which are legal in this. So he kind of made the rounds ugly, muggly, even within it, because the ring is kind of small. So it's it, – that. At all times, you're going to have to fight. The best bet is to stay in the center of the ring because it's really just a small square, and it's a triangle. So it's a small square in the center, and it's corners. And when you get into those corners, that's where you get in the danger. So Michael Seals was trying to stay in the middle of the ring. Michael Perry was doing a good job at clinching, getting him to the corner, hitting him with shots. Uh, Michael Seals uh, dropped uh, Mike Perry in this fight twice. He dropped Michael Perry twice in this fight. You know what I mean? And... Mike Perry got the split decision win over Michael Seals. Michael Seals started off good early, and Mike Perry kind of came on later. But I thought that Michael Seals pulled out the victory of Team Boxing, but the judges gave Michael Perry this of Team MMA. So now at this point, you know, it's uh, five wins to one, you know, Team MMA over Team Boxing. Again, this was a highly controversial decision between Michael Seals and Mike Perry. If you're going to pick one fight to watch on this whole card, Go watch this fight, Michael Seals versus Mike, Michael Perry, the best fight on the card. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Seals uh, is still a boxer. You know, he's still fighting, just had a fight in August, got a win in August. You know what I mean? Uh, he just took his first loss and tried comeback sports. But he's the guy, he said he's still looking for the next fight. See, he won my rematch of Mike Perry again. What Mike Perry said after this fight is he's the money man in this division and UFC is for bitches. That's why I like Mike Perry because he gives you shit like that. <laughs> so shout out Michael Perry. But Michael Perry was seen victorious against Michael Seals, against Michael Seals in the highly controversial split decision. This probably was the best fight of the night. Michael Seals versus Michael Perry. Not the highlight of the night, but the best fight. But okay, the co-main event. I mean, and that was the co-main event to this fight card, by the way. Uh in uh in the other co-main event, we got uh team boxing, Alexander Flores versus Team MMA, Matt Mitrione. This fight is a heavyweight. Again, Matt Mitrione is a former NFL player. He used to play for the Minnesota Vikings, if I'm not mistaken. Matt Mitrione, the team MMA, is 13 and 9. He has 11 KOs and two decision wins. He's 43 years old, stands 6'3, 255 pounds. His best, he he was not a former champion, you know what I mean? But his best, you know, accolade of his career is he has a win over a guy named Fedor Elimilenko. Fedor Elimilenko. Y'all know who Fedor is, Fedor Elimilenko. You know, it's two of them. He got a brother, Fedor Elimilenko, 
and he got a and it's another uh element Ninko. I hope I'm not butchering their names, but it's two of them. But that's one of the best UFC MMA guys ever to put on a pair of gloves. I mean, when we talking the best MMA fighters, their family, those two brothers are goaded. You know what I mean? So his best accomplishment is a win over Fedor and Melaninko. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Fedor is the better of the two brothers. You know what I mean? So that's big for uh, Matt Mitrion. Matt Mitrion is facing the guy in Alexander Flores. Now, Alexander Flores is an, in is an interesting character of team boxing. Alexander Flores is still a current boxer right now of team boxing. He's a guy who I think is a pretty good boxer. You know what I mean? He's 19 and 3 with 16 KOs. He's 31 years old, 6'4, 240 pounds. And again, I'm giving these guys their full credit. He's a former champion. He has held a, a, a championship belt in his life. And he's the former WBC youth heavyweight champion. He held his belt when he was 22 years old. He's now 31. I'm giving these guys their full kudos. So Alexander Flores is also, you know, a former champion that competed in a triad combat sport event who represented team boxing. This guy, I think personally, is a pretty good boxer. You know what I mean? He fought, uh, you know, Charles Martin and he fought Luis Ortiz. You know what I mean? He fought Charles Martin for the NABO uh, championship belt in which he lost. And he fought Luis Ortiz in his last fight uh, of last year, 2020, uh, which he lost. You know what I mean? But I think this guy is a pretty decent boxer. In this fight, he dominated Team MMA's Matt Mixeron, Team Boxing Alexander Flores, pretty much put on the show. The thing with Alexander Flores in boxing is he can box and he does have power, but he doesn't have a chin. He doesn't really have the best chin. And that's where he meets, you know, um, his hardest time. He has three losses and they're all been by knockout. And they were against Charles Martin and uh, uh, Luis Ortiz. You know what I mean? So he's lost the high level competition, but his team just doesn't seem to hold up, you know, against the best of the best. But in this fight, in the comeback triad sports fight, he looked amazing against Matt Mitrione. He won every round, won pretty easy. The fight wasn't close. He outboxed him. He beat him up pretty much. But Matt Mitrione started out strong in the first round. And after the first round, Alexander Flores controlled the fight. You know what I mean? Uh, team boxing is now two and five in this event. You know what I mean? Going into the main event. And again, with their scoring, the way they scored it, uh, Team MMA won the total event 14 points to 11 points. They're five and two at this point going into the main event. You know what I mean? And in the main event, we got a boxer that you guys – and then <laughs> and then in the main event, we got a boxer that you guys might know. And Kurad Pulev, Kurad Pulev is 28 and 2 with 14 KOs. He's 40 years old, 6'4", 79 each arm reach. And he's also a former champion. He held the EBU European Championship, which is a belt, you know, over there in the UK. Shout out Kurad Pulev. Kurad Pulev uh, has two losses to Anthony Joshua and his other loss claim to uh, Vladimir Klitschko. So, you know, he only has two losses against two top-tier, you know, competitors. AJ Klitschko. Kurad Pulev faced off in the main event against the UFC Hall of Famer and Frank Mir. Now, Frank Mir is one of those guys who took some losses towards the back end of his MMA UFC career. But Frank Mir is 19 and 13 with five KOs, nine submissions, and four decisions. Now, Frank Mir uh, is seen, really seen as a wrestler. Not really sure why Frank Mir wanted to box. Uh, Frank, if in the Frank Mir name sound familiar to you, boxing world, it's because this the same guy that boxed Anderson Silva, and Anderson Silva, you know, knocked him out. Anderson Silva knocked out Frank Mir, and now Kurat Pulaf in the first round in devastating fashion, he came and he knocked out, you know, uh, Frank Mir as well. I mean, the fight was over as quick as it started. Was pretty brutal, y'all. I mean, it was pretty brutal. And I'm actually going to show y'all this knockout, Kurat Pulev over uh over Frank Mir, because I got to show you this one. I might just go down and listen, show y'all a couple, you know, of these fights real quick, so y'all can kind of get a reference for these fighters and who they are, things like that. Let me find it real quick. Let me find it real quick. If I'm just gonna type it in, I'm gonna show you uh Kurat Pulev. Knock it over Frank Mir. See, y'all probably seen that one. Y'all probably seen that one, huh? Y'all probably seen that one, huh? Okay, yeah. So, okay, y'all probably seen them. But, yeah. Uh, so, Kurat Pulev got the knockout over Frank Mir. 
And Frank Murray is a former UFC heavyweight champion. And uh, Kurad Pulev never held a major American belt. But Kurad Pulev did hold a major, you know, European belt. So over there where he at, to his people and his country and his homeland, he is a major champion. So I'll, so I'll credit to Kurad Pulev. Kurad Pulev is seen as a major champion where he's from. And Frank Murray is also a former heavyweight uh, champion, uh, you know, in America, in the UFC. But so in, in, in total on this event, uh, MMA won this event, you know, four fights to three with a total of 14 points by 11 by their scoring system. You know what I mean? And uh, I think this is a good idea what Triad got going on. It's a whole boxing versus MMA thing. I think as the as this thing grows, as the names grow, uh, more people are going to get on to it. More people are going to, you know, start to get on board with it. You know, as they get bigger names, you know, more people start to watch. You no, know, we we know Shannon Breeze and Rampage Jackson, but they haven't fought just yet. They are team captains right now. They uh and they put together teams. You know, they fight team boxing versus team MMA. But then let me catch myself. After the fight, no post fight, I just gave y'all the whole fight card. Post fight. Uh Shannon Briggs did have some issues with stuff that went on. Let me tell you one of Shannon Briggs' issues. Shannon Briggs, one of Shannon Briggs' issues was he said he felt like that, you know, uh he wanted to be able to pick his own team. Shannon Briggs felt like he didn't get a chance to pick his own fighters. Shannon Briggs said he want more say so over which fighters get picked. So Shannon Briggs kind of feel like the team boxing lost the first event because you know. He didn't necessarily get to pick the fighters, you know, that uh, he wanted. And he also said uh, he had a problem. He also said that he had a problem with them not being able to go out there and fill the ring out before the fights. He said in boxing, you know, every fighter is allowed to go out there, you know, check the ring out like a day before the fight, the day of the fight. Anytime you want to, pretty much you can go check the ring out, you know what I mean? Or they have a designated time for you to go check the ring out. Shannon Briggs said no fighter was able, wasn't allowed to go, you know, see how the ring feel, you know, get used to the ring. And he said he didn't like it. Quinn Rampage Jackson, yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, skinny too little. Quinn Rampage Jackson and Shannon Briggs will be fighting. Not sure when they'll be fighting, but, you know, it's a whole event, you know, MMA versus boxing, you know what I mean? But uh, Quinn Rampage Jackson's problem with it was he said he needs to be more clear on what the MMA fighters can and can't do with the clinch. Like underhooks, stuff like that. You know what I mean? He said he know they can't take people down, but he was like, they said that we could clinch. He said all clinching should be allowed. He said the referee will warn a lot of his fighters in certain situations where he felt like that should be legal. So it need to be a, a more of a clear understanding on the rules of the clinch. So Shannon Breeze's problem was that you know he couldn't pick his own team and that he didn't like that his fighters couldn't actually go train in the ring before the event or the day of the event, get a feel for the ring. Rampage problem was more so with the clinching rules and what's legal and what's not legal. But, uh, again, this league is being, you know, ran by Trilla and, you know, other investors. But the face of this league is our current Rampage and, uh, you know, uh, Shannon Breed. You know what I mean? So they said, you know, they want to get, you know, this all straightened out. They want to get everything good. They said they were uh, satisfied with the first event. And how it went, so they want to get everything good and uh out playing, so there's no confusion about nothing. I think the idea of letting them have more say so in the teams in the fights that I pick, I think that's a good idea. And I also think that you know, of course, letting the fighters being able to get in the ring and feel the ring out is a good idea. I like I like what they're trying to do in mixing. I like what they're trying to do in mixing both boxing and MMA. You know what I mean? I think that's a great idea. I think right now, you know, I think Burn Knuckle, I think Burn Knuckle is cool. I watch it. I watch it. I think Burn Knuckle is a big overboard. It's a brute, a brutal sport. You know, really hard to watch. I think this, you know, they use MMA gloves, not boxing gloves. I think this is the best representation of boxing versus MMA. I think once they get better, you know, more known boxers and MMA fighters in this, this thing is gonna take off. I uh I do, I do encourage everybody. So, you know, watch the next event. You know what I mean? I watched the first event. I encourage everybody to watch the next event because I think this shit is going to go somewhere. Y'all. I think I could see guys like. Like, yeah, I could see guys like. Um, I could see guys like. Uh, 
Like, see, they just say Kurad Pulev. Y'all know Kurad Pulev. Kurad Pulev, one of those heavyweights over there on the UK circuit. Guys like Kurad Pulev. Guys like Dylan White. You know, guys like Gary Shashora. Guys like uh, Charles Martin. Guys like, uh, not Charles Martin. Now, you know, Charles Martin after he retired. Uh, you know, heavyweights of that level. I can see a lot of them going over here. Even MMA guys, older MMA guys like Roy Nelson, uh, MMA guys, uh, you know, like see Queen Rampage, MMA guys, like uh, like uh, Tyrone Woodley. You know what I mean? Speaking of Tyrone Woodley, uh, Tyrone Woodley, MMA guys like that going at Tyrone Woodley was actually at that event, and Tyrone Woodley actually said he could see himself doing that event. I actually believe Tyrone Woodley was actually thinking about going in there to do this until he got that Jake Powell call. With Tyson Fury, you know, uh, uh, jumping out of the event. Tyrone Woodley was at this, uh, was at this event that I'm talking about. I told you, y'all gonna be here for a second because I like this. I think this is a good idea. And I want to get as many people, you know, involved on this conversation as I can about this trash sports thing. And uh, Tyrone Woodley was at this event. He said, I most definitely could see myself doing this. I like the clinch rule. You know, I'm a striker. This is something I could see being right in my alley. And actually, guys like Tyrone Woodley, would dominate this league because this is perfect for a guy like Tyron Woodley. You know what I mean? Tyron Woodley is a wrestling based guy, but Tyron Woodley only likes to strike. He's a wrestling based guy, but he's also a boxing based guy. The first gym, his home gym, is a boxing gym. Why I call boxing gym Freddie Roach and uh and uh, uh Fred Brown, Eddie Brown. His name is last name is Michael Brown. I hope I'm not butchering your name. I know I'm butchering your name, but you know his his head trainer is uh I think his name is uh. Mike Brown, the basketball. I think his name is uh Eddie Brown or something like that. But his original gym is a boxing gym, Tyron Woolley. This would be perfect for a guy like Tyron. Well, I think Tyron Woolley is the perfect person to be able to push this, especially with this fight after Jake Paul. Let's say he go here and fight Jake Paul. You know, he's not gonna take no damage against Jake Paul. So he go in here, he fight Jake Paul, then he come out and he do one of these triad combat sports events. Tyron Woolley is the perfect guy, you know what I'm saying? In older MMA, older known MMA fighters. Older known in the uh uh boxers type deal. Let's say she we come do this fight, we get a goddamn fight between uh Tyrone Woodley. Let's say we get Tyrone Woodley versus uh Stephen Cunningham or something like that. We have Tyrone Woodley versus uh Stephen Cunningham, you know what I mean, type deal. Just stuff like that. I think this thing has, you know, a higher seat. I mean just fights that could happen like next week, not the ceiling. Uh, the ceiling for this, you know, rampage. Shannon Briggs type shit. Uh, you know, having those older guys, older guys not too. Oh, I'm trying to think of some of those like a guy like a uh, like a Mike Tyson or something to come and do a comeback sports event against a goddamn Chuck Liddell. Mike Tyson to fight Chuck Liddell. Mike Tyson to fight Randy Couture in a comeback sports event or something like that type deal. You know, I think this thing has the potential to be great, and I think the people should get behind it. I'm going to get behind it because I'm most definitely going to support Shannon Briggs and I'm going to support Quinn Rampage Jackson. Both of those are guys that, you know, I knew from my youth. I was real heavy on Quinn Rampage Jackson, especially being from Memphis, who don't know Shannon Briggs. Let's go, champ. You know what I mean? Devin Blocker said, is this where they fighting this small-ass ring? Yes, this is. Triangle Combat Sports. Yep, they triangle ring. The ring is small. So that means it's high action, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Go watch a couple of those fights. Go watch a couple of those fights. Let me give you the fights I want y'all to go watch. Let me give you the fights I want y'all to go watch. I want y'all to go watch Alexia Cup versus uh, uh, Angelina uh, Hoffenschneider. I want y'all to go watch Derek Campos versus Brian Vera. And I want y'all to go watch Michael Perry versus Michael Seals. And y'all already know about Kurad Pulev. And Frank Miller. Let's go, champ. You know what I mean? I'm uh I'm a big supporter of this. You know, I think this is gonna be this is the beginning of this, but I could see the end result of this on some real shit. Child, I think I'm gonna actually reach out to these people about you know a promote like trying to help these trying to help them promote this and everything. No cap. I really do want to be a part of this thing. I wanna see if I can get my ass in there some kind of way. You know, I checked out their channels, and to be real with y'all, no no shade to them, but they channel don't do as good as my channel. 
you know what I mean? Or they do just as good as my channel. Be real, child. I, I'm gonna try to, and there's no slight to them. What I'm saying is, shit, we could help each other because I'm a fan of what's going on. You know what I mean? I'm a fan of what's going on with this, and I really want to be a part of it. So I'm gonna start sending them guys emails and letters, emails and letters, and all that good shit. You know what I mean? Because I I do want me on this. I'm hyped about this. I think it's gonna take for us to get that right mix of boxer and that right mix of MMA fighter. But it's to really, really, really take off. But y'all, if y'all want to be y'all own judge, please go watch this first event. Go watch this first event. Uh, I was highly entertained from the first fight. The first fight was a split decision. The second fight was a 45-second knockout. The third fight was a uh, – who, who, who had the third fight? The third fight was a uh, – was a majority decision, high intense fight. Both guys got knocked down. One guy got knocked down twice. The fourth fight, uh, one guy got knocked down twice. Uh, it was a split decision win for Michael Perry. I feel like Michael Perry really lost, but he got the win. The fifth fight was a uh was a complete domination. You know what I mean? The boxer put on the clinic against the MMA guy. He couldn't knock him out, but he outclassed him from round one to round seven. A lot of punishment was taken. The uh six fight, the uh the six fight was another brutal was another brutal fight. Both guys got knocked down, and the main event was a thirty was like a thirty second knockout, forty five second knockout. Kurat Pulev, a guy y'all might know, put Frank Murray to sleep. Another guy y'all might know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really enjoyed that. Let me holler at my folks in here. We can chop it up a little second if y'all want to chop it up a little second. You know what I mean? I say I, I do this video an hour. Because I really, I really am excited about this shit type deal. We can talk about, but like, this is some shit that I want to get myself involved on type deal. Let me holler at my people though. Shout out my guy MP. What the fuck? Shout out. Let me put y'all comments up. Shout out my guy MP. What the fuck? He said salute team chat. What's good? It was good to MP. Shout out my guy John Paul Gasol. What's good, my brother? He said salute team chat and fam. Shout out my guy Willie Beats. He said rooting for rampage. Salute fam. Salute to you. Shout out my guy DP Rocker. MP. What the fuck? My guy Jay Gibson, he said, salute T and the fam. What's good? My guy Jay Gibson, skinny too litty. He said, my boy T, what's good? Skinny, how you feeling, my brother? He said, I'm loving this team MMA versus boxing thing. Me too, skinny. I'm excited about this shit, skinny. Shout out my guy, uh, Shamar Rashawn Shalom. He said, salute, 72. Shout out my brother, Shamar. Shout out my brother, Shamar. Glad you can make it. I am Trill Will. Shout out, I am Trey Wheel. Slide through the building. Glad you can make it, bro. Shout out, my guy. Trap Media. Trap, trap. Shout out, my guy, Trap Media. Glad you can make it, my brother. Shout out, my guy, Craig Barton. Appreciate you sliding through this, John, my brother. My co host, my Facebook moderator. <coughs> the guy in full control of my Facebook group. I see my Facebook group growing, and I ain't sharing that, John, but I see it growing. Shout out, my guy, Marco Casey. Shout out the man of the hour, my guy, Ross Sportsman Lee. How you doing, my brother? I'm going to put y'all in the refrigerator for a second because I'm going to put some water. And I got this bun in my hand. I want to put some more water in my cup so y'all can look at my refrigerator. Shout out my guy, Devin Block. Appreciate you sliding through these drums, my guy. Glad you can make it. Shout out my guy, uh, Misha Pemp. Appreciate my guy, Misha, sliding through this junk. Shout out my guy, a condo. Shout out my brother, Kondo, sliding through this joint. Glad you can make it, Brody. Shout out my guy, Big sliding through this joint. Glad you can make it, Brody. Glad y'all good folks can make it. Who else in y'all getting here? Okay, this everybody. He said, skinning too little. He said, okay, okay, okay. My boy's talking to me now. A Kondo said, Briggs is a technician compared to Rampage, but Rampage can catch him with a wild overhand, and he can clinch. Another thing Rampage said after the fight was Rampage said after the fight, he was like, uh, at first, you know, I want to get him in the boxing ring and I want to get him MMA. He said, but now I'm kind of feeling this triad combat sports thing. Cause I can kind of, I can see myself doing this. <clears throat> he said, if I'm Shannon, I'd be real scared right now. So I think it's going to be a good fight. You know what I mean? Uh, Shannon Breeze is a lot bigger than Quentin Rampage Jackson. Uh, Shannon Briggs is 6'4". Quinn Rampage is 6'1". Shannon Briggs has an 80-inch arm reach. Rampage Jackson has a 73-inch arm reach. But they weigh exactly the same. You know what I mean? 
So, Kundo, I think it's going to be interesting either way. Shout out my guy, Kundo, with the input, bro. The glad you came through this job. My guy, Skinny 2, Liddy said, I want Rampage to win for the hell of it. Yeah, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be fabulous. But what I think they're doing is, y'all, I, I don't want to break y'all hard or nothing like that. But what I kind of think they're doing is, I think they're going to use them two coaches to sell this event, to sell the fight for, you know, as long as they can before they have to get in the ring. You know what I mean? Type deal. Or they might do like a saga type thing. But I don't think they're going to be fighting anytime soon just yet. I think right now they're going to be they gonna be coaching and they're going to put on, you know, as many events as they can between boxing, teams of boxing and teams versus MMA as they can before the people get mad as fuck and start asking for them to fight finally. You know what I mean? I think they more so promoting this thing right now. Of course, they are going to get in the ring, y'all. Of course, they are going to get in the ring. I truly believe it. But I think it's not going to be as soon as we would like as we, or as we would want it to be type deal. You know what I mean? Shout out my guy to Zone. Appreciate you sliding through this junk. Trap Media said maybe she is Nunez could fight in her. Come on, Trap. That's an idea, Trap. That's an idea, Trap. You get a hey, Trap. Trap. Get out of my goddamn. Trap, you on my nose, Trap. Trap, is you on my goddamn nose, Trap? Trap Media in my motherfucking notes. Trap, get out of my notes. Trap, you on my goddamn notes. You on my notepad. Trap said maybe Shields and Nunez go fight her. You goddamn right. I wasn't even gonna say nothing about that because I was gonna do a goddamn sudden tea about that. Trap them blew my motherfucking spot. Trap them blew my motherfucking spot in here, man. We gotta kick this nigga out, dog. Trap come back blowing my motherfucking spot and shit. You can see my motherfucking nose trap. He said, I think they go switch coaches each season. Uh, nah, they got to keep Rampage and Shannon, bro. Ain't nobody go sell like Rampage and Shannon unless you get bigger. What's Who are bigger personalities than Shannon Briggs and Rampage Jackson? You know what I mean? You gonna have to go top notch to get bigger, you know, personality than that. He said, I 1,000% agree with you, T. Appreciate you. He said, Connor said, they want to build a fight up. It's going to be lots of PR prints. Bingo. That's what I'm guessing. Yep. That's what I'm guessing. And then they got an interesting dynamic in their relationship. They got an interesting dynamic in their relationship as to where, you know what I mean? We don't know if they friends or they enemies because sometimes you see them, they be laughing, getting along, making jokes and shit. And then in the same breath, when they laugh and getting along, you see them motherfuckers squaring each other up and shit like this. So <laughs> you don't know whether a fight really go break out or not. Nigga, one time they was about to fight on the stage. They team was about to fight. Shannon Breeze broke it up. And then Rampage got rough with Shannon Breeze. He pushed Shannon Breeze. And then Shannon Breeze was letting him push him at first. And then Shannon Breeze kind of gave him a little pushback. And then he 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 kind of leaned over to Rampage. Like he was like, he said he like he said something to him. And then they just kind of stepped back. I think he said, Hey, bro. The, he said, Hey, bro, y'all better chill this shit down before we blow this motherfucking bag up here. You go fuck that bag up, Rampage. And I think they chill down. But, you but we don't know whether these folks go fight for real or we know they cool, but they both volatile. They both fighters. They both fight. It's like they cool, but they don't know what the other person thinking. That's how you is. That's how it is when you in fighting situation. You know, even when they get to walking up on you, they still be kind of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They be making jokes, but they still be aware of what's going on. So I think it's the interest that name with them, too. I think they need to let these two promote it. Let's say they fight or fight or whatever. and You bring some more people in. Still let Quinn Rampage and uh you know Shannon Breeze promote it because the moment Quinn Rampage and Shannon Breeze done with it, bro. If you get them out, I'm done with it. Unless you get like you gotta get some major folks to do this shit. If you kick these two person actors out, as many people love these two people, you got Shannon Breeze from New York, uh up north, uh, I mean out east, you know, on the east coast with New York. You got uh Shannon Briggs down here down south. And Memphis, as many people love these two people, these two person actors, what these people did for their sports and shit, bro, you can't, you can't get rid of these folks. He said, Dana White and Oscar on try it. Fuck you talking about? He said, Carney and AB. He said, it's better for Shannon and Rampage do the talk trash and build it up. Facts. If Clarissa Shields cleaned up her grind game, then make the fight with Nunez, give her time to work on it more. I, I, I'm in that same boat. I'm in that same boat, especially with Nunez being you know, a little older. He said Canelo in the Nigeria MMA guy. 
would be in the Nigerian MMA guy would be here. Oh, you talking about uh you talking about uh you talking about uh uh damn Uzma. You talking about Uzma, come on Uzma. You talking about Kamara Usman? Yeah. But that's going to be the thing, y'all. Y'all on the right track. And that's going to be the thing, getting the right mix of the fighters to come do that shit. You get the right mix of fighters to come do that shit, that shit go, that shit go uh, pop. He said, if the coaches change, the interest will drop fast. Even if they have different fighters type shit, they need to make sure they have Rampage and Queen, and Queen Rampage and uh, Shannon Briggs pushing that shit, bro. Like, for real, they need to if they even if they have new coaches, just let them promote it. Let them be the face of team boxing and team MMA type deal. Let them do the interviews and shit like that. Cause they, you know, they they big personalities they sell. And I really do want to see them folks ass fight. Be real with you. Long live Kimbo Slice. Long live Kimbo Slice. This could be perfect for somebody like Kimbo Slice, man. This I wish this shit was out 20, 20, 20. 20 years ago, you know what I mean? A nigga like Kimbo, this would be perfect for a guy like Kimbo. What's good, chap? I'm going to let y'all go and come in type shit because uh, I'm excited about that. I had rewatched this card this morning as I was doing the homework and shit. You know what I mean? Found out some pretty interesting gems here. A lot of these folks fought. A lot of the guys we know. Some of these guys, you know, fought Roy Jones Jr. Some of these guys fought Ronald Gravel, Jaleon Love, Pitch Cole, Anthony Joshua. Uh, some of these guys fought goddamn. If y'all do know, you know, Rich Clemente from MMA. Some of these guys fought Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture. Some of these guys fought BJ Penn. So a lot of these guys in these events, you know, they not a lot of guys that we know, but these these are what so far in the first event they got a lot of you know journeymen for lack of a better word. But you know, when you put them, when you, it's like you put a journeyman MMA with a journeyman boxing. You know, you right now this what you get. But go ahead, chap. I think Mike Perry and Michael Seals was uh very entertaining. And if you really want to see some substance in this shit, go watch uh Alexander Flores versus uh Matt Mitrion, or go watch uh Albert Tamunel versus Scott Sigma. Scott Sigma is a boxer. He got beat up by the MMA fighter. It was substance. And uh and uh, Alexander Flores is a boxer, and he beat up Matt Mitrion, and it was substance. My bad, chap. Come back in, chap. My bad, child. Come back in, child. My bad. But yeah. He said they've been talking smack to each other on the end there for a while. Now that's the juicy part, too. Yeah, in fact, they've been going at it about eight months. They've been going at it about eight months. And then they kind of died down for like a month or two, but then they brought it back up. Like uh shit, last month with this shit. They gave them folks their own league. Y'all see how big I don't think them folks going nowhere. Because at first, this fight was just a fight between them two. They was going to do it in the boxing ring and the MMA ring. But now they didn't get these folks their own sport, their own network, put it on pay-per-view, gave them folks their own schedule, their own fighters, their own promotional companies, their own mics throughout the whole show. Queen Rampage and Shannon Breeze got a mic talking to each other, the camera going back and forth from them to fight, them to fight. But these folks have invested highly in this shit. This shit going to blow up, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this shit going to blow up. Damn. And and I think we all should get behind. No cap, y'all. I'm gonna try my best. Okay, baby, baby. I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my best to get my uh hands in this job. No cap, because I fuck with uh, I I fuck with what they got going on. Somebody said somebody. He said I want to see GSP. Right? Who uh, GSP versus uh GSP versus Sugar Shane Mosley? Come on, y'all. George Saint Pierre. Versus Sugar Shane Mosley. Imagine that George St. Pierre versus Sugar Shane Mosley in Triad Combat Sports. Boy, stop playing. Now, trap. Skinny too lady. Skinny. 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 Triller is the biggest sponsor for Triad Combat Sports, Skinny. Triller is really trying to get their hand in on. You know, combat sports. They the biggest sponsor for trad combat sports. No caps, skin. They the biggest sponsor. 
They the biggest sponsor, bro. They tried. They tried. I fuck with it. This was a Triller was gonna put on Quinn. This is what I'm saying. Triller was gonna put on Quinn Rampage Jackson versus uh versus uh Shannon Briggs. But it turned into this, it turned into boxing versus MMA. So they they really invest in hella money into them folks. Type deal. And I think it's gonna be good. I think they need to do like three, four more events. I really think they need to keep doing these events until they get real big enough and people want to see them fight. You know, ain't nobody gonna watch the first event. If they fight the second event, that's gonna be the end of it. We didn't get rid of the suspense. I think they need to keep doing MMA versus boxing. They need to keep beefing with each other. They need to keep going back and forth. You need to keep getting on the internet talking shit. You need to keep making memes. You need to keep flirting with each other, girlfriends and wives and shit. You need to keep doing all that shit until it gets to where it's going. If it's if they don't fight until the middle of next year, if they don't fight until two years later, that's cool with me. They just need to get the right names in this shit and build this shit the right way. He's the old ass new. I didn't even know that I learned something new every day. Yep, they fight. Seven rounds. They fight seven rounds, pretty much boxing rules in a triangle. Too many rounds. Seven too many rounds in a triangle, and you can clinch while you box. You dirty boxing is allowed. Like you could hold clinch, like you could do, you could do everything but flip them. You can do everything but take them down, really. No elbows. Straight uh hand to hand comeback type deal, but but I got, I got four more minutes talking about her album. But I encourage y'all, I encourage y'all to go watch that fight card. I encourage y'all to go watch that fight card. I encourage y'all to uh you know support this shit because I think eventually like this shit gonna be big. This shit gonna be big. I lost my goddamn. Lost my goddamn. Ah, right, there you go. Again, if y'all want to check out some fights on that jump, go check out Facts. Cain Vasquez Facts. If y'all want to check out some fights on that jump, check out Kurad Pulev versus Frank Mir. Check out Michael Seals versus Mike Perry. Check out Alexia Cook versus Angelina. Half, half Schneider, half Shin Schneider. Matter of fact, y'all, I'm finna show y'all that knockout. I'm finna show y'all that Angela Cup knockout, y'all. I'm finna show y'all that Angela Cup knockout. No cap. Watch this shit. This the fight I said that never should have put together. They never should have put this fight together, bro. It's a women's fight. It's a trash sport. It's on Triller. I will say get Brock in there, but he back. Nah, Brock. Yeah, this perfect for Brock. Some shit like that with Brock. Brock will go back to the WWE every time. Because y'all know I got I to gotta have it up there a certain time. I got to have it up there a certain time. So I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all the knockout on it. Can y'all see? Oh, shit. My bad, y'all. Yeah, That was Colt. That was the girl fight. That was the MMA fighter. That was the MMA fighter, Alexia Cook. That was beating up the team boxing fighter, Angelina Hoffman Schneider. He said, W. Monaco always beat up for him so he can do trash just that the E would because the way W. moving him had money just to lose around here and that makes some promos. Yeah, facts. That 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 was the women's fight. That was the women's fight. 
He said, Cause Richard Sears versus Ronda Rousey. Oh, no, nah, don't do Ronda Rousey like that. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to get it back. Make sure y'all go to my uh my Bob Aaron Shakur Stevenson video. I'm going to go and do that joint right now. I'm going to go and get that joint out the way. Make sure y'all go to my Shakur Stevenson uh, Bob Aaron video next. I'm going to tell y'all what to think. I what the fuck I think about Bob Aaron and what he doing to uh, Shakur Stevenson. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it to I'm giving it to y'all direct and real. So make sure y'all go over to that joint. I'm finna go right over there. I'm finna go like right over there. But I appreciate everybody that came through this joint. Appreciate everybody that came through this joint. Skin the Hardaway Sudden T. This ain't the past. This ain't the future. But this the present. This how we rocking. And I'm out. Love. Meet me on the next live stream. Beat me to the next live stream.